an honest discussion with a former college athlete and now a recruiting expert. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 169. Welcome to the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Fugler, Athletic Scholarship Coach and a dad of two scholarship athletes. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me, and I'm a podcaster, of course, uh, an author and speaker. And this podcast, by the way, is the longest running podcast on athletic scholarships and recruiting. It's 15 minutes each week that will change your scholarship future. I dig right in. I, I give you takeaways you can use immediately. There's no fluff. And in 15 minutes, we do have to dig in. And this episode, I got a special guest. Don't ordinarily have guests, but uh, I've been working for a while to get Kirsten on the line. And so we had a great conversation. I want to bring that to you. I do want to remind you, too, that I've got uh, the free resource, the Recruiting Power Pack at RecruitMe.com. Go get it if you haven't already. And if you want a step-by-step resource that you can purchase for a few bucks, go to Amazon and pick up the Athletic Scholarship Playbook. It's a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents. And uh, uh, this is a time of year that people are really cranking it up. Families are cranking it up, and I think that book will help you out. Now, Kirsten Sires is the president and CEO of LRT Sports, uh, a former athlete who's got her own story to tell. It wasn't all smooth sailing. I think you'll be you'll find that interesting. And then how she has a passion now to help other families navigate this recruiting process. She's got a very interesting resource. Uh, she'll tell you more about that, but it's it's the Yelp of college coaches. That's all I'll say about that right now. And I think you'll find it valuable uh, and some other things too. But we had a great conversation with her, and I want to go to that right now. Kirsten Sires, the founder and CEO of LRT Sports. Kirsten, thanks for joining us on the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship podcast. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, you're a, a former athlete, and, and now you help athletes and parents in this whole uh, recruiting maze to an athletic scholarship. And uh, thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the kind words. Uh, you know, I'm just here to help share some wisdom uh, for the next generation of student athletes. Well, well speaking of wisdom, I, I'm just going to start off with this point blank question. Uh, what do you know about recruiting now that you wish you knew as an athlete? <laughs> I think that's a great question. And my first answer is a lot. <laughs> but to narrow it down to one specific thing, I think you know, looking back on my recruiting process and everything, I wish that I had somebody or a platform or a website or something to kind of just um, tell me, hey, you need to be looking through your research a little bit more and researching what the school is actually like, what majors they offer, um, and just really getting into just the nitty gritty of everything to do with the school and not so much just focusing on the athletics. Um, the athletic side is great. But, you know, there's always that factor of, you know, what if you break your leg tomorrow and you can't play your sport? You want to make sure that you're happy on that campus and that you are loving your school because that school is tied to your name really for the rest of your life when you have job interviews and your it's on your resume and everything else. So really just doing that research about the school, the athletics and everything else involved. Now, you started LRT Sports and what led to that? Yeah, so I was a college athlete at Skidmore College, and I played tennis and soccer there, and I was actually a uh, recruited tennis player, and I ended up not getting along with my coach after my first year, so, you know, we won our league, um, we went to NCAAs, and then after NCAAs were over, I decided to quit. Um, him and I did not get along. He did some things I didn't agree with, and it was a really big mismatch with coach player mentality, um, which happens a lot of the times. So I decided to be a walk-on for soccer, and I was a soccer player at Skidmore for my last three years of college, which I say all the time I didn't even play in high school. So if somebody told me, hey, you're going to be a college soccer player, I would have laughed. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, you know, that's kind of was the inspiration to start LRT Sports, and I had that passion to keep the next generation of athletes informed on all things uh, recruiting that aren't necessarily out in the open. So you had, you had a real experience. I mean, you had a disappointing experience and something that was, that turned out really well. So you've seen both sides of it. Correct. Yeah. And you know, it, 
Although I say I wish I knew to research schools a little bit more, I really did get lucky with Skidmore because I loved Skidmore so much that I didn't want to transfer. Um, and that was a really tough decision between do I transfer and continue to play tennis or do I stay at the school that I love and the major that I love and kind of sacrifice my sport for um, these other aspects of things. So I think I got really lucky with Skidmore. Uh, and I'm still very close with the school and it's, you know, something that they've actually helped me with my, my, uh, website and my career and everything else. So it's something that I'm thankful for that I went through. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I still wish that when I was going through the process, I did more research. I just happened to land in a really, really great, um, academic environment. Well, with the, uh, the internet, I mean, there's so much information out there these days. In fact, I tell some families there's too much. You could get so confused. You got to have somebody who, uh, guide you along the way. Uh, what are some of the misconceptions, biggest misconceptions that families have these days about recruiting and athletic scholarships? Yeah, I think um, specific to that, for, my first thing I'm going to say really quickly is um, scholarships with Ivy League. Um, every you know, people think it's Division One, so there must be scholarships involved. There's not, but they obviously have um, a lot of financial aid and merit-based scholarships and wonderful things in order to help athletes play at in the Ivy League. Um, I think that's the first thing. And then the second thing is probably dealing with the fact that they don't look into the different types of scholarships that are involved with their sport. So I sometimes hear athletes and parents saying, oh, I want to get a full ride scholarship, but that might necessarily not be an opportunity for their specific sport or the school that they're looking at. So I think just having somebody to help guide you through that scholarship um, process and going through that information is really, really important. So you can kind of understand what is involved with those um, aspects of recruiting and scholarship. What do you find are the biggest uh, obstacles on getting an athletic scholarship uh, for athletes? As you've worked with athletes and parents, um, what's, what's the biggest obstacle, a couple of them you, you, that you see out there? Yeah, um, there, there are a couple. I mean, I think putting the work in is definitely something where there's uh, maybe a conception, especially with some of the bigger sports, like, oh, you know, all these coaches are just going to come to me and offer me all these scholarships. But you really have to put in the work to do the research, to have somebody help guide you, to um, also just really understand and appreciate the coach's perspective now with all the technology that's available with Twitter and YouTube and Huddle and everything else happening that um, they're receiving a lot of emails and it's really difficult for them with NCAA regulations and budgets to reach out to all the kids that they want to. So I think it's one of those things where it's okay to put in the work and reach out to those coaches. There's no, you know, like shame in it. And not everybody is going to be in a situation for a full ride at Al Alabama to play football. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's okay to ask for help and to lean on other people. But I think Sometimes people, I don't know why, but sometimes I feel like there's a, a notion of I don't want to ask for help or I don't want to go and reach out or look into this or do that. But at this day and age with recruiting and 8 million high school athletes playing college sports, you kind of need to rely on other people and ask for that help, especially people who have already been through the process or who are dedicated to helping others. Mm, I, I love what you said there. Ask for help from people who have already been through the process. And uh, that's Folks, you, you need to go to people who have succeeded at this <laughs> because yeah. I know uh, when I was uh, working with our kids, all us parents were clueless when we were going through this together. And I didn't know anybody who was successful. And I, I like what you say there. Uh, latch on to somebody who's been successful so they can lead you down the road that works. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I tell people all the time. Division one might not be the right division for you that, you know, power five school might not be right for you. And to really just make sure that you're asking the questions to a trusted advisor, to a coach, to uh, even just the college coaches. And when you're on your recruiting trip and the athletes that are there and the professors and ask as many questions as possible, because you need to see yourself living there for four years or maybe five years or however long it takes you to finish college. But then also, again, like I said, tying your name to this university or college for the rest of your career and life and, you know, everything that now moves forward. I want to ask you about something unique about your, your business and on your website, you talk about it. So, but that's in the back of my mind. I've got a question before that to ask you though, that okay. uh, is this, okay, Kirsten, a family calls you. Uh, they're looking for help. 
So what do you tell them? I'm sure this has happened many, many times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first thing I tell them is to do as much research as possible uh, and to see if they have anybody else that had graduated before them or anybody else that has friends that has already that have already gone through the recruiting process in order to ask them questions about what they did um, and everything else. But outside of the research and the asking the questions, I the biggest piece of advice that I could give is make sure that your grades are um, high and that your SAT scores are high because it opens up so many more doors to you in a lot of different ways. Um, you can have athletic and academic scholarships and you can kind of um, start to pull from you know, different pieces and you just have a lot more opportunity if your grades are up to par and then coaches don't have to, you know, worry about what band you're in and all these other things that go into um, scholarships. Do you think, uh, well, I think I know the answer to this, that parents are probably going, yes, yes, you hear this? And, uh, but the athletes I find don't really, they hear that, but they don't, they don't take it to heart as much as the parents do. Are you seeing that? as well? Do you need to convince the athletes of that? Yeah, I think so. You know, and I'm not, I think it's probably a little bit more difficult as a, you know, let's call it 15 to 18 year old to kind of see the bigger picture. Um, I know I certainly didn't at the time and there's a lot going on and you are dealing with coaches who are obviously, you know, anywhere from 22 and older and, um, you know, it, there's, there, you're talking to all these adults and everything's happening, but I, I do agree that, um, the, the parents are definitely taking more of a jump into that. Um, yes, yes. Type, type of mentality. Well, uh, LRT sports on your website, LRT sports, it's uh, LRT dash sports.com. Uh, what I love here is, uh, you've got a coach rating system. You actually invite people to rate a coach. Tell us, about that aspect of, of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So it's anything like, you know, rate my professor or Yelp or Glassdoor um, and anything else that deals with anonymous ratings in a certain space. But basically we invite and allow college athletes to rate their college coaches um, in order to stay more informed, you know, or giving more information to the high schoolers and the parents that are going through the recruiting process. Um, there's a lot of, information out there on the bigger sports and the footballs and obviously you can go read books on Nick Saban and all of these really high um, achieving coaches but then when you take a step back and look at the majority of college athletics um, and you're dealing with a fencing coach or a tennis coach or really any other coaches especially at the smaller divisions or the smaller schools there starts to become a lack of information about those coaches out there. So we wanted to try and provide that information to the next generation of student athletes as they're going through and getting recruited by, uh, you know, multiple different coaches so they can actually see what the coach is like. And also, you know, a big thing for me is seeing if you can play for that coach, because there are a lot of very successful coaches that are very strict. And I think a lot of athletes, um, you know, respond very well to that but then there might be other athletes that don't so i think it's finding that personality fit that you don't necessarily really get on one recruiting trip and a couple of phone calls i'm looking at one of these uh ratings that's on the page now i don't know if it's just a sample or not but uh the things that they've rated the coach on is accessible uh cool direct honest intense knowledgeable and motivational it looks like it's a, a one to five rating system is that right Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, some comments about the coach underneath and uh, kind of narrative format. Helen is a great coach and role model. She really gets to know her players and treats them like family. And it goes on from there. I can see how that's that's so helpful because it's hard for a student athlete to show up and uh, meet with a coach, even the parents too. And you, you're nervous. You don't know what to say. You don't know what questions to ask sometimes. And this let you get uh, behind the curtain a little bit and get the truth. I, I like what you're doing here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And you know, it's also from the parent's perspective, you want to know that your child is going to be left with a human that has, you know, your, your child's best interest um, throughout the four years of school on and off the field or the court or the pool or whatever it may be, because again, everybody ultimately is there to get a degree. Um, so you want to make sure that somebody's going to allow them to thrive in all aspects of 
their lives. And I think that that's something that's super important. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of coaches that are using our website to show recruits like, Hey, I have a great rating. And, you know, I have a lot of athletes that actually, you know, really like me and I, here's why and everything else. So um, we're seeing that a lot of great coaches are actually finding it as a marketing tool in order to kind of showcase themselves a little bit more to some of these athletes. Well, tell me really quickly, kind of the elevator speech, how can our families make the best use of LRT sports? Yeah, I think the coach ratings is definitely first and foremost, the, the, you know, the thing that's a little bit different about us. And then um, on our site, we have a section called the huddle where we discuss um, everything to do with new NCAA rules. And we talk to professional athletes, current and former college coaches and current former college athletes about um, their stories about, uh, you know, situations that they've been through, what specific coaches are looking for in recruits to that school or to that specific, you know, coach. Um, and we have a ton of information about Ivy League sports, Division Three, Division One, Division Two, and we try to hit on every sport um, in the NCAA, NAIA, and junior college. And we also have a subscription model that kind of helps organize uh, recruiting process and, and starting it from the ground up, but really hitting on the transparent realities of everything that is going into recruiting in the digital world. Fantastic. That's great. That's great. And uh, Kirsten, thank you for uh, spending time with us on the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship podcast. Uh, You know, we're in this together trying to help the families and uh, avoid those pitfalls and be successful on this. I call it the uh, recruiting maze. (laughs) It's so confusing out there. Yes, (laughs) yes. That it is. That it is. But thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Well, I want to thank Kirsten for taking the time to be with me on the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship podcast. I told you it would be unique, unique perspective and some of the things that she has to offer through LRT Sports. And uh, I encourage you to go ahead and check out their website. Go for it right now and and find out what they have to offer, resources. She mentioned the huddle, and I've been reading through that in the last couple weeks here and seeing something almost every day posted there that uh, takes a different angle in uh, especially uh, hearing from college coaches and other experts as well. So check that out. Well, that's it for this week. I'll be back with you next week. And a reminder that if you haven't subscribed yet, go to your favorite podcast app. Don't just listen, but hit subscribe so you know when every episode comes out. And it's just about every Tuesday. This is late in the evening on Tuesday. This gets it but I'm making my deadline, okay? Hey, we'll talk to you next week.